Detroit University was the first institute of mechanics in the world. A university of many firsts. Harriet Watt University was the first university in the UK to admit women in 1869. 21 years before it was made a legal requirement for universities to allow women to come and study. Something that we are so proud of until today. So before Cambridge and Oxford and the rest of it, the university recognized that women has the right to contribute to the development of themselves, their families, and also their uh, societies. And that's why I'm very pleased that we are having a session about women in industry. This is very, very important and very close to our hearts, and I dare say it's in our DNA. Now, the 1821, or the time around that, was called the first industrial revolution for a reason because it was an era of disruption many people lost their jobs many jobs were new jobs were created new skills were needed and today we are in a very similar time it's called the fourth industrial revolution and it's an era where technology automation mainly big data is threatening many of our jobs we are hoping that it will create new jobs. We are not very sure what kind of jobs are going to be created. And some people or some institutions and some policymakers, they believe that the, to address the needs of the fourth industrial revolution, you need to go and learn. Everybody needs to learn about data and everybody needs to learn how to program computers and the rest of it. And I think this is important, but I think we are missing the point. We believe that every human being brings three types of labors, three types of capabilities to any endeavor that we undertake. We bring our physical labor, our physical capability, our capability to move and manipulate things physically using our muscles. We also bring our cognitive, our thinking capabilities, and we bring our emotional capabilities. On the, during the first Industrial Revolution, there was a time where we have created machines that they were stronger and better than us in the physical domain. Our machines are stronger, faster than us physically. And that's why there was the time where we as human beings, we needed to develop our cognitive capabilities. And, and for almost 100 years, people could get a job just by virtue of being able to memorize a standard, for example, because this is really needed for them to do the job. Now, the fourth industrial revolution is, is really focusing on creating machines that are somehow better than us in some of the cognitive capabilities. I hope you agree with me that computers have better memory than any living human being. Computers are better at optimizing things compared to any uh, human being, and that's why Waze will know the way better than any one of us. Uh, Alpha, I noticed that you are a chess player, but I hope you, you know that there's no human being that can beat a computer at chess now. So. Machines are getting better than us in uh, an, increasingly, an increasing number of cognitive capabilities. And we believe that the future is human and the future is emotional. So the last domain for us, the last frontier for us as human beings is, our, is to develop our emotional capabilities, our self-awareness our capability to build relationships, our capability to stand here and give a speech, our capability to build a connection with another human being because this, these would be the skills that put on top of great academic capabilities like the actuarial science and the petroleum engineering and the rest of it. These will be the things that will get you the jobs. These will be the things that 
will be, I'm speaking here mainly to the students, and I hope the industry leaders would agree with me, these would be the things that will get you the job, this would be the thing that will differentiate you from a machine, and these will be the things that will keep you motivated, happy, and relevant in a time of disruption. So this is really our philosophy, uh, philosophy our educational philosophy. We believe that education is not only about creating academic excellence. It's very important, but not sufficient. And that's why we have excellent, at this university, excellent uh, uh, educational programs. But on top of that, we believe that education needs to develop emotional intelligence and to develop happiness within the students. And that's why we are focusing on, on this a great deal. We started a program that we call the Empower Program that takes our students into a four-step journey. The first level is what we call leading self. And every one of our first-year students need to go through this program. They need to develop an impact statement that talks about how do they want to make the world a better place. <coughs> and throughout the year, they will go through activities and initiatives that are focusing on making them understand their, themselves, their strengths, their opportunities for improvement. The second level is about leading teams, and the third level is about leading communities, and ultimately it's about leading enterprise. So it's all about leadership, but it starts by leading and knowing self. So, this is an important moment in history. The choices that we will be making will really impact us personally, but they will be impacting our industry, our country, and also the world. So it's very important that we all make the right choices. A.J. Wells once said that civilization is in a race between education and catastrophe. And I believe with work like the work that we are doing here and you are being part of, civilization is going to end. So I would like before I end to thank the, uh, the students, Alpha and his team, for the great work that they have been doing. I know there are many hours behind bringing such an event. I'm personally proud of you. Thank you very much for all that work. And I also would like to thank our students for attending and being part of this work, our academics for supporting this, and finally, our guests from the industry. And I wish you all, I wish us all a great conference. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Mushtaq, for that extremely profound and inspiring speech.